we do not make the same mistakes as those who did not respond to the call of Imam salam. Meaning what? The community and the society at that time faced a debilitating illness in society. Do you know what that was? That was weakness of commitment or weakness of willpower. Za'ful irada is known in Arabic. Let me give you examples. A man by the name of Harthama ibn Abi Muslim was with Amir al-Mu'mineen in Safin. This man went with Amir al-Mu'mineen and when Amir al-Mu'mineen passed by Karbala, the narration tells us that he picks up the soil of Karbala. He smells it, he kisses it and says, what a soil you are from you people will be resurrected on the day of judgment and taken to Jannah without accountability. Hartama says, I saw this. People cried, yes? On the way to Karbala, Imam alayhi salam comes to Hartama and says, Hartama, are you joining us? Are you part of this caravan? He says, Ya'bna Rasulullah, look at my children. They are young. How can I make them orphan? Notice. Is there any more than seeing Amir al muminin say that there will be what this particular event happening? More than the grandson of the Prophet coming and inviting you? And yet there was this weakness, this inability to see the truth or to go for the truth. This apathy that existed. Likewise, whom? This individual, Ubaidullah ibn al-Hurr al-Ju'fi, in the area known as Qasr Bani Muqatil, Imam alayhi salam also came to him and said to him, you have so many sins to ask forgiveness because this man actually fought Amir al muminin and Safin. Come and join me and Allah will forgive your sins. What did he say? He says, you know, I have a business, I have family, I'll give you my horse. Yes. He said to the Imam, I will not join you, I will give you my horse. Likewise, some members of Bani Asad, Habib ibn Mudahir, when he arrived in Karbala, he went to the tribe of Bani Asad. He said to them, do you know what's happening? This is the grandson of the Holy Prophet. He's been surrounded by these enemies. Do you know who this man is? Why do you not help him? Come and support him. I am your sheikh. I am your leader from Kufa. I am telling you this is the path of salvation. What did they say? The vast majority said, no, thank you. Why? What was going on in their minds? What was happening? You and I sit here today and think, if we were in their position, would we do the same thing? The people of Kufa, the way they treated Muslim ibn Aqil after giving him so much support, how they dispersed one by one. Yes, there are reasons. There was incredible fear that was spread. There was scaremongering, no doubt. But there was a problem. What was that problem? The problem was that they were weak. Weak in determination and their strength. Their willpower left a lot to be desired. Today, if we look at our situation, when you and I stand and say, Labbayka ya Hussein, we must not be included in the group recited in Ziyar Ashura, Allahu ummatan sami'at bidhalika faraviyat bih. May the mercy of Allah be withdrawn from a community who hears the call of the Imam and does not respond and is pleased with what is happening. What do we mean? What do we mean? Sometimes some of us have been overwhelmed or overtaken by lustful and desirous intentions. That all of our lives is about our ego, boosting our ego, looking after ourselves. We are careless about what the situation of others entail. We are apathetic, we are lethargic, we are not interested about what is going on. Yes? Look at, for example, the great martyr who was martyred this year, Sheikh Nimr al Nimr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul. Yes? He stood in the path of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. How many people around the world spoke out? How many people faced oppression and demanded that he's free, freed from the prisons and that he is not executed? Yes? What is happening out there, God forbid, is that we are feeling what? We are feeling a sense of isolation. It's all about me and I am not what? Part of a wider ummah, part of a wider community, that I have roles and responsibilities. And what is going on sometimes is what? We are looking at minor issues and we're not focusing on the bigger picture. Please understand this, yes? In certain occasions, we are picking on matters which are irrelevant and not looking at ways in which we can improve our situation. Let me give you an example. Once an alim was leading salah. When he was leading salah, he finished salah. Someone from the congregation came to him and said, Molana, 
يقول صلاة is باطل. Why? What happened? He said, Molana, when you're doing sajda, your nose was not touching the ground. So it is باطل. Do you know what the alim said to him? He said, can I ask you a question? What was your nose doing during that process? <laughs> Meaning what? If you were behind me in salah, you would not notice where my nose was. You were there to find faults. You were watching from another place to see if I was making a mistake. In other words, there is sometimes a tendency to create friction, to bring about division, to split the ummah, the community, the society. The idea that emerges is intentions are there, are not always sincere. No doubt about this. And there are people working behind the scenes to create what? To create all kinds of difficulties and problems. Should we as followers of the Imam, when we say labbayka ya Hussein, it means, oh Imam, we will never do what the people, some people of Kufa did. We will never do like those individuals who, are, who, who heard your call, but don't did not respond yes one important thing that is emerging in this day and age which is certainly one that needs to be addressed is what I call the microwave faith do you know what that is that is when individuals people are looking for loopholes as far as their religion is concerned as far as the practice of faith like you know sometimes we buy these ready meals and we place these ready meals where in the microwave we're not really bothered to cook it of, or cook a, cook a meal or prepare the meal and buy the ingredients. We want something quite quickly. Today, what we are facing is a dilemma, is a problem that in certain communities around the world, the youth are continuously asking, is there a way out of this? I'm not bothered to do this. I don't want to struggle. I don't want to put the effort in it. Yes, they want an easy life. And this is because of what? Because of the fact that you and I have been bombarded with this culture of possession, of wanting and acquiring. There is what? There is the I want. Yes? There is the I belong, the I possess. Everything that comes out, we want to have it, we want to take it. Yes? And that is impacting and it's making us more and more lethargic in our attitude to faith, in our approach to religion. Meaning what? We don't take it sometimes seriously. We don't put the struggle. We don't put the hardship. Yes? Because everything's out there to make life easy for us. There's nothing bad about that. But as far as our faith is concerned, don't expect just because there are instruments out there that make life very easy, that all of a sudden religion should be changed. Allah, sometimes I wonder, in 10 years' time, somebody will come out from somewhere and say, it is permissible to do your salah online. Honestly, you wonder whether that actually will happen one day, yes? The idea that emerges is that people are looking at religion very superficially. They're not willing to place the effort and the struggle and the hardship that makes them better human beings, that makes them better individuals. That's why when you and I say, Labbayk Ya Hussein, it means, Ya Aba Abdullah, this statement denotes that I will place my effort and I will do whatever it takes to speak against oppression and injustice. I will do whatever it takes to struggle in my life, to place the effort, to look for the strength and the commitment into in every single path and dedication that I place.